Good evening. Welcome to Inside Out. I'm Pat Smith, and this is where we take you inside state and local federal government to bring information out to you. Tonight, helping me do that is our independent candidate here in Montgomery County for County Executive, Nancy Florine. Nancy, welcome. Thanks for having me. And congratulations, <laughs> congratulations on your endorsement from the Washington Post. Let me just read their description of you. A tough-minded pragmatist, Nancy Florine is cl the clear choice for county voters determined to protect and improve the county's schools, parks, and future. Congratulations. Thank you. I was very honored to get that. And how many years have you served on the council? I've been on the council for 16 years uh, and ending my fourth term. Before that, you know, I was a member of the county planning board for eight, um, mayor of Garrett Park, uh, aide to Senator Barbara Mikulski, mm -hmm. uh, and a community lawyer for a bunch of community groups throughout Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. It's been a great opportunity to serve the public. So you certainly know the <laughs> county well and the operation of the county. I know where a lot of bodies are buried here and a lot of <laughs> issues that need to be talked about and addressed. Right. Well, on people's mind, I think foremost is education as usual mm -hmm. here in Montgomery County, and in particular, how can they be sure that their kids are safe when they drive, when they go to school? Well, you know, uh, uh, we're all concerned about education. You know, MCPS, let's agree, is the jewel in our crown. And uh, I am very concerned that we have in place the right leadership that ensures that we can continue to fund them at the level that they need to be funded at. Uh, we need to grow our tax base. We need to invite investment in our community so that we can keep taxes down and support these great, um, great resources that we have. With respect to safety, uh, you know, we have been funding student resor uh, school resource officers who've helped a lot in terms of, I think, making our young people feel safe, uh, folks they can confide in when they're concerned about situations, and there are linked to the, uh, uh, some of them are uh, members of the police force, so we have a direct relationship uh, to solving problems right in the ground as uh, quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, also, school cameras are available, are out there uh, to keep an eye on uh, who's coming in and out. The end of the, it's absolutely true though that we all have to work collectively uh, to address these concerns. I know, you know, uh, a lot of the uh, safety issues that we're seeing in Montgomery County often are the product of domestic abuse situations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty awful. We've seen a couple of situations quite recently uh, where people just lose it. And that also happens with our young kids, too. So I'm also concerned about our mental health um, system. Are we providing enough resources to our troubled youth and, and, and young people who know about other kids who are experiencing problems? You know, these kids who show up with a gun at school are, you know, they could be members of the school community. And usually, you know, kid, other kids have sort of a sense of who's not mm -hmm. functional, you know. So uh, we need to continue to work on that to make, make our community feel like they can talk to leadership when they see a problem, when they hear of a problem. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm committed to making happen. Okay. It, as, as the population grows, and it will continue to grow, Mm -hmm. uh, you see all of these apartment buildings being built brand new for rental, uh, particularly in the Gaithersburg area, Rockville Town Center, now over in Wheaton. Uh, it's happening everywhere. That puts a great burden on the brick and mortar of the school system. Mm -hmm. And we are so dependent on our money coming back from the state for the capital improvement budget. How do we get a bigger chunk of what we contribute over there? I mean, for example, the Register of Will supports like 19 other Register of Wills offices, mm. staff and everything with the money that our Register of Wills collects and sends down to Annapolis. Well, there are a couple of things there. Uh, first, uh, people need to know uh, that we impose on the development community uh, certainly the highest impact taxes 
uh, for schools of any place in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a cost to new development uh, that they have to bear. And that's something that uh, I and uh, my opponent worked out on and agreed to uh, for many, many years. Uh, the other issue, though, is really Annapolis, uh, how we get our tax dollars returned to Montgomery County. Uh, there still is this perception that I'm going to continue to work on trying to eliminate that our roads are paved with gold here in Montgomery County. You I and I know, I know that's not I the know. case, I know. Uh, but people continue to hear that and think that. And, and you have to work with folks across party lines uh, throughout the state and at the gubernatorial level to make sure they appreciate our needs. Mm -hmm. uh, I did. I've done that when I've been council president the last two times. Last time, I spent a lot of time in Annapolis, working with our delegation and helping them be successful and uh, appreciating all the details of our needs mm -hmm. and moving that in a collaborative way across the state. Right now, I'm really concerned. You know, um, uh, the Kerwin report. The Kerwin report right. is that we expect it to be out any day that has recommendations for a school funding formula, both for uh, operational uh, needs oh, and, operational also, as well. and also capital construction. There are actually two studies right. going on as we speak. Uh, we're going to need to be very vigilant. Uh, the county executive is going to need to be on top of that to make sure that those fund formulas do not adversely affect us. I'm all for paying teachers more. Mm -hmm. I'm all, and certainly, uh, we need a better uh, share of the school construction budget. Uh, and we need to be very clear about why that's warranted and why the formula needs to reflect it. I'm happy uh, for our people to support other school systems, but at the end of the day, we need our fair share back, too. Our residents are taxed pretty heavily. I'm very sensitive to that, and I'm pretty committed to making sure we don't have to go any further in that regard. That's why. I'm focusing on expanding our tax base. There's extreme competition in the legislature because of the dire need of the city of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I mean, their school system, I read in the Baltimore Sun last week, needs $88 million just to get it operational so that they have air conditioning, mm. you know, just window air conditioning units and things of the, of the kind and heating repairs. Uh, proper water running through the faucets and things of that nature. It is in dire shape, and it comes into the same pool we're in. Well, that's true, but, you know, we have aging schools, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and Montgomery County has often forward, is, we forward fund this stuff. Then we go back to the state to get reimbursement for it. Mm -hmm. So we have faced this challenge head on, and we will continue to do that because our kids are the most important product of Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do need help from the state level, and we have to make sure that you know additional taxes aren't proposed that unfairly target Montgomery County residents to the exclusion of, of other regions. Uh, we do think we've paid our, done as much as we can for local funding of systems, and we'd like to see that be the case throughout the state. I can't tell other jurisdictions what to do, but I can point out what we're doing and that we have uh, have put in our rightful uh, commitment mm -hmm. uh, to school funding, and the other uh, jurisdictions also need to pony up. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Everyone wants somebody else to pay for everything. OPM, other people's money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, this good. is going to uh, really be a big issue for Montgomery County in the next couple of years. I don't think they're going to decide it in the coming legislative session. My understanding is it will be in uh, 20, uh, yeah, when the final they, decisions are made. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. Especially with the report not yet out. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. there's, there's going to be a lot of uh, negotiation going on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting point, but I'm anxious to see that Kerwin report as everyone else is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We now, all are really, uh, really interested in that. And the in devil is in the details. True. And as you said, you want to keep taxes where they are. You don't want to increase taxes at all. Your Republican candidate in this race for county executive, he has always been raging war on cutting taxes. Then it was term limits. And now he has signs out in 270 that widen 270 now. 
but he's going to cut taxes. The state isn't going to pay for widening 270 all on its own. And the debate is just beginning as to whether widening is the right alternative. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that kind of dichotomy that we got to cut taxes, but we got to widen 270? Well, Where's right. the logic? Right. There, <laughs> you, you see the issue. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would disagree with you. Uh, the 270 is a state and federal obligation. Remember, right. that's an interstate. Right. Same with the Beltway. Uh, that's their problem, and we need them. And I compliment the governor on taking this on. Mm -hmm. uh, there aren't e easy solutions. And what I want to tell the people who live like in the uh, Woodley Gardens communities or any community up along <laughs> 270, is yeah. that where you live? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> how did I know? Um, uh, whatever. We, I, I'm going to be a vigilant advocate to protect uh, their communities. Mm -hmm. And no one at this stage of the game is talking about uh, really expanding the width of 270 as much as looking at the existing right-of-way, that's the part the state owns, and what we can do within that right-of-way. Mm -hmm. uh, there are creative solutions out there. There are electronic lanes, there are reversible lanes, there are lanes that you can change in the course of the day by uh, moving barriers and the like. This is what the rest of the world does. That's right. And there's no reason why we can't be equally creative. Uh, this conversation uh, will be clearer starting in January. Mm -hmm. Right now, the state people are kind of throwing spaghetti against the wall, see what sticks, see what sort of a rational, doable, potentially possible uh, solution. And uh, we'll know by, I'm told by January, they will have fig figured out a you know, probably half a dozen solutions, alternatives, mm -hmm. that will warrant further study. And then at least we'll know what we're talking about in terms of positioning and, and what we really, really want out of this. The bigger problem with the work that's going on on 270 is they're not looking at past Sam Ike Highway. So everything north of Gaithersburg really isn't in the mix yet. And that's where people are coming wow. from. So the real issue is 270 all the way up to, um, frankly, to 70 to Washington County. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to deal with those commuters? One of my uh, proposals, frankly, uh, is uh, I think we need to create a regional transportation authority mm -hmm. uh, with respect to roads and transit outside of the district mm -hmm. with our partners in um, our adjacent communities, Howard and Frederick in particular. And we need to work together and not assume that our problems stop at the county line. Mm -hmm. Now, last I looked, our people are commuting across, across the river, uh, across our borders on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we need to have uh, solutions that address everyone. Uh, Montgomery County is not an island. We need to think in right. a bigger way as we move forward. Yeah. Well, that's great. We will be right back. There's a lot more to yeah. talk about, but we'll be right back. I'm Pat Smith. You're watching Inside Out, and I have Nancy Florine, independent candidate for county executive, with me here today. We, we just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as harder. I can. One in five children struggle with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Welcome back. You're watching Inside Out. I'm Pat Smith, and with me this evening, helping me bring information out to you is independent candidate for county executive, Nancy Florine. Thanks for having I, me. Sure. I should also <laughs> mention in a 16-year veteran of the council, among other things. So certainly well-versed in the operation of the county government. We were talking about education just before mm -hmm. we left for the break. I just want to clarify that your position is that we should they should try to take care of the expansion of 270 within the already existing uh, right of way. Absolutely, you know, we're really constrained, certainly below 370 and Sam Ike Highway. There's not much room, uh, you know, I think realistically, uh, they're gonna have to stay within the right of way and that's the part that the state owns already. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and absolutely, I'm committed to making sure that our existing communities are gonna be fully protected mm -hmm. from whatever goes on. Well, and you mentioned how we have to work with the other counties. Mm -hmm. 
I-270, for instance, if I'm going to court in the morning in Frederick, it is just unbelievable. It's a parking lot all the way to Frederick. That's right. And one of the issues I've identified is heavy trailer trucks and trucks trying to make it up the hills as they come on down. And one of the hills is coming up into Urbana, Clarksburg mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. um, but with ICC regulations, I don't see any way you can regulate the trucks to limit what hours they can get down 270 South or whether we could get just a designated lane for them to poke along in. <laughs> but that backs up the traffic horrendously to Frederick. Well, you know, we got to remember we're part of a region. And, That's right. And this is an interstate system. Uh, we've got a lot of through traffic that stuck going on 270 and the Beltway. We really don't have good alternatives for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not uh, supporting an additional bridge over the river uh, to go into uh, Virginia, but we do need to make, have a serious need to make a trans transportation improvements. There's no reason in my book why we can't have reversible lanes on 270 all the way up to Frederick. And if we had a regional solution, mm -hmm. a regional um, transportation authority like they have in Northern Virginia, we might be able to put together a plan for funding of this stuff sooner rather than later. You know, one of the flaws in the work that's going on right now is that the analysis stops at in Gaithersburg. Mm -hmm. So we don't take into account where the bulk of the travelers are coming mm -hmm. from, which is Germantown, Clarksburg, Frederick, Washington County, and points west. So we need to think bigger and uh, ra more rationally about how we do this. We also, I'm proposing also that we actually have a bus rapid transit system as part of this that goes not just to the county line, but goes up to Frederick City. Mm -hmm. uh, so likewise in Route 29. Why don't we think bigger and take that farther so we can get some of those compute commuters to be happy to, you know, work on their uh, laptops and whatnot on their way to work mm -hmm. uh, without having to get into traffic at, in, a, in a longer distance, distant way. We have to be creative with our solutions. And frankly, there's no excuse why we're not. Um, mm -hmm. The study for 270 had been shelved. When I first ran for office in, after uh, 2002, uh, people stopped work on it. I think people said, well, we built you the ICC, you know, get over it. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to keep moving on this. Yes, okay. Now to public safety. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a great fire department. We have a pretty good po police department. We certainly have great leadership in the police department. But we've had some incidents of recent uh, shootings. I mean, we never used to hear of a police shooting no. here in Montgomery yeah. County. And uh, now we've had three in the last 12 months. Uh, what do you think is happening? Is it the viciousness of the gangs out there? I can't put my finger on it, but I do believe that's contributing to the problem. Um, there are drugs, there are gangs, and um, uh, there are things occurring under the radar screen. Uh, we need to really support our police officers in their hard undercover work. We need to make sure they have the best training on the planet mm -hmm. to deal with these increasingly challenging situations. And that's another situation where these problems are not just Montgomery County problems, they're regional problems. Mm -hmm. D.C., Prince George's, Howard throughout. Um, we need to work together on finding, uh, making sure we're in the community and of the community and connected to the community to make sure that our police officers can do the right, the work they need to do. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that they're careful about it. Um, and I know our folks are, are well-trained. Mm -hmm. um, we need to make sure that we're continuing to use best practices for them dealing with these difficult situations. Have you ever done the training up at the Public Safety uh, Training Academy? No. Worth a shot. I did that. Uh, I, well, shot, I shouldn't have said shot. <laughs> I did that uh, a couple months ago, and I will tell you, under their scenario, I would be dead of uh, dealing with a difficult situation. Uh -huh. It takes so much judgment. It takes a split second to, to uh, end someone's life or to protect a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. These are not easy situations. Right. And uh, my praise goes out to our people on the street every day, and we need to make sure that they're well supported. Yes, absolutely. Now you said, you mentioned earlier about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. We have so much of it in Montgomery County and a lot of resources have gone to it with the new Family Justice Center. 
which is not new, and it's like six years yeah. old, I would think. But the sheriff's office has done a great job with, in, comp, in partnership with the state's attorney's office to handle things for the women and children mm. who are being subjected to uh, domestic violence. But the volume is so much that there are petitions in the district and circuit court every day of the week. And then for criminal behavior for violating the petition, mm. you know, if you have an order against you and you violate it, it's a crime. There's a full docket on Thursdays every week in Silver Spring and a full docket on Friday every week in Rockville. It's just unbelievable. I don't know what we need to do to bring about something that stems this growth yeah, of domestic it, violence. It, it's hard, you know, uh, uh, dealing with the pressures of, uh, of family life. Uh, how, I think one of the biggest uh, things that uh, we can do is create an environment of great job training and access to good employment. Mm -hmm. uh, economic pressures right. put a real strain on families. Absolutely. Uh, if you have to share space with people, if you have to uh, uh, just deal with children in a contained environment, uh, that's a huge issue. That's why I've been a big uh, advocate uh, for affordable housing mm -hmm. and ways to make it easier for families to uh, live in Montgomery County in, in good, clean, safe environments. I think that helps a lot. I'm also concerned about the mental health implications of yeah, all this. Right. Uh, you know, that's really the major function of our jail these days, providing mental health services to the uh, folks who have to stay there. Um, it's an unseen problem. Uh, that, that It's all linked. You have to see the bigger picture mm -hmm. as you move forward. And uh, I, I do think mental health services, uh, helping uh, families in stress is a re really key uh, function. You know, we've put together visitation centers and the like for, for folks uh, dealing with family difficulties through the court system. But we need to do, uh, make sure that when they finally get back together, they have the opportunity that they need to feel to achieve something. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all here on this planet to uh, make, really to make a better place. Uh, what we all want is a safe place to live and an opportunity to succeed, especially for our children. Mm -hmm. And we need to continue to grow our business environment mm -hmm. to provide those great jobs for people and get everyone mm -hmm. an opportunity uh, to take part of what they're here for, which is the American dream. It's true. Mm -hmm. I don't need to mean to sound hokey, but no. it's, at the end of the I, day, that's really that what it's to, all about. That, that segues to my next question, which was going to be, could you tell our viewers what your view is of the future going forward. here well, in Montgomery County? Where are you going to take us? I, I'm really excited about this. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I got in this race uh, late, that's for sure, uh, and the support has been overwhelming. But what we need to do is have a leader with a vision, uh, a positive vision about creating a positive environment, uh, making sure that everyone can succeed, uh, bringing in new investment to support our, our jobs, to create opportunities where employers want to be. Uh, that gives everybody a leg up. Mm -hmm. the end of the day, that's the most important thing we can do, I believe, as a leader, is to set a positive tone uh, for Montgomery County, not argue about things about the past, but set a positive tone mm -hmm. uh, for our future because, you know, we have so many smart people here. We have so many people with potential, and we need to harness that to move us all forward. As I said earlier, I'm, I'm interested in creating a regional transportation authority. Mm -hmm. I think that will help the perception uh, that we're not doing as much as we should about congestion, which mm -hmm. is also always a constraint. I'd like to see us uh, start work in creating a real four-year research institution um, to supplement what we have at uh, your universities of Shady Grove. Mm -hmm. I think that will also support private investment and job growth. There's George Mason over in uh, Fairfax. We need something like that here. Uh, mm -hmm. I want our people to feel inspired about their future here in Montgomery County. You know, we're not a bedroom community anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we're our own place. And we right. can create our own destiny 
if, if we put our minds to it. Uh, I want great jobs here so people don't have to go to the district or Virginia to, to have, uh, find a good income stream for their families and their, their future. Right. Uh, I want us to make everything possible. You know, um, I was doing some filming the other day at United Therapeutics in Silver Spring. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. You know, it's focusing, focusing on, uh, on respiratory issues. And uh, one program that they have is they rescue tr lungs um, from donors. They clean them up mm. and they, uh, they save people's lives. They send them off to folks across the country and the world who need help with their lungs. And I was sp speaking to um, one of their young researchers who said, you know, this is like working at Google. This is like thinking about the next big thing that we can invent, that we can do to solve our, our, our world's needs. I think I want Montgomery County to feel entrepreneurial, to feel optimistic, just like that, to feel that th everything is possible if we work together. Sure, there are details you can argue about. Sure, there are things we need to solve. There's no simple path, but there is a path mm -hmm. that I'm looking forward to leading us on. Wonderful, wonderful. And you've been endorsed by the, uh, the Washington Post. I do just want to read uh, one paragraph as to what their reasoning was. <laughs> and they say, Ms. Florine, I and Will, no nonsense and deeply experienced, would make an exceptionally competent leader. Ms. Dalrich, Montgomery's foremost opponent of business and growth for more than a decade, is also well-versed on the issues, but he would imperil the county's economic and fiscal prospects. A third candidate, Republican nominee Robin Ficker, is a rabble-rouser notorious for heckling at Washington Wizards games, as well as for repeated disciplinary actions taken against him by Maryland's Court of Appeals. That is really a solid reasoning as to why you were endorsed. Buy that paper. Yeah. <laughs> I don't buy any papers. I know. It's a shame. <laughs> it's all online. I know. Um, and I wonder what will happen to the print media, but it's not going to be here forever. That's a whole a couple of sessions you know, going forward. Yeah. Well, that's a challenge, you know. It's hard to get your word out these days. Mm -hmm. You know, I, when I first started in this, uh, we had the Journal, mm -hmm. Montgomery Journal. We had the Gazette. Uh, we still have a couple local papers here and there, but they're really quite small. And uh, the Post weighs in periodically on big issues, but we don't have a, a paper anymore that tells us about what's really going on countywide that we can look at on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I actually want to do, uh, increase our communication to a Montgomery County residents about what's going on. You know, I know people in Chevy Chase who've never been to the AFI in Silver Spring. Mm -hmm. I know people in Silver Spring who've never spent time over in Bethesda or up at Rio or in, up in Clarksburg or in our great parks at Little Bennett. Mm -hmm. We have so much to offer. We do. And we have so many great people and businesses here. We're going to share their successes going forward. Wonderful. Tell our viewers how they can get in touch with you. Oh, easy, easy. Uh, Nancy at nancyflorine.com or my website is nancyflorine.com. Wonderful. And the election is what date? Uh, November 6th, coming on down. November uh, early voting starts on the 25th. Uh, that will, those will be at the early voting centers that we had during the primary. Mm -hmm. So there, there's no excuse uh, to not vote. This is really a pivotal election for folks. This is going to define the future of Montgomery County. If you're going to go forward or you're going to slow it down. Yeah. I think we need to go forward uh, to create a great future for everyone. Right. Well, we wish you the best of luck. And thank thank you. you for coming in. I'm Pat Smith. You've been watching Inside Out. We air here on Channel 16 on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening. Thank you.